what's ahead for this team. Welcome to the Gulf Coast of Florida. Another hot day here in Dunedin, Florida. It's 26 degrees. People on the beach in Clearwater. They're out on the bay in Tampa Bay sailing around. And the Blue Jays will take on the Boston Red Sox here at Florida Auto Exchange Stadium. Hello, everybody. I'm Buck Martinez, along with Joe Siddle. And Joe, today we'll talk a little bit about the starting pitching. A year ago, when the Blue Jays broke camp, there were a lot of question marks in the rotation. This year, they're optimistic about what they might get from the rotation. Why are the Blue Jays so upbeat about their starters? Well, it was just a year ago that Drew Hutchison made that opening day start at Yankee Stadium. And now a year later, Drew is on the outside looking in for a rotation spot. It was the youngster, Daniel Norris, that had a good spring. He was rewarded as a rookie with a spot in that rotation. R.A. Dickey is back. Aaron Sanchez is back. Or someone that may take that spot if Sanchez goes to the bullpen. The biggest shoes to fill are those that belong to Mark Burley. His 200 quality innings are going to be tough to replace. But it's going to be up to Jay Happ, who was rewarded with a three-year contract by the Blue Jays after a night Nice finish going to the Pirates at the trade deadline from the Seattle Mariners. Marcus Stroman's penciled in at the top of the rotation. He made just four starts a year ago. Why are the Blue Jays so high on Marcus Stroman as their starter? Well, it was a devastating injury last spring to Marcus and missed most of the season. He did come back, but this is one of the brightest young starting pitchers, stars, I think, in the game, and we're going to see it this year. Marcus has the ability to throw any pitch in any count. Russell Martin said the other day, pitches just come out of his hands so crisply, so sharp, and he can work both sides of the plate to continue to keep hitters off balance. Stephen Wright, the knuckleballer, will go to the hill for the Red Sox. He'll be opposed by Marcus Stroman. And for more on the young right-hander, let's check in with Hazel May. Buck, Marcus Stroman will be making his third start of the spring. Expect him to go four innings as he continues to build up that arm strength. Now, as Joe mentioned, by all accounts, all six of his pitches have been really working with for him, although he has been trying to get a feel for the changeup. Uh, manager John Gibbons told me he's been impressed with what he's seen from the young right-hander. And when I pressed on Mom whether he wants to officially anoint Stroman as the opening day starter, uh, Buck Gibbons said with a small quote, maybe in a few days. Well, Marcus Stroman is lined up to make the opening day start. Everything is going well. Edwin Encarnacion will play this next week. R.A. Dickey's in great shape. And the kids in camp off to a great start. The Blue Jays 8-1 and one early on in Florida. A fresh take on the...
Welcome back to Florida. Another beautiful afternoon here on this Saturday afternoon. The Boston Red Sox are here. Red Sox are five and four so far this spring. We'll keep that right at the top of the order. Boy, he was a thorn in the Blue Jays' side a year ago. Hit 384 against the Jays with a OPS over a thousand. Rock Holt, super utility guy, last season a career high 27 doubles and 45 RBIs. He made the All Star team for the first time in his career as a super utility player. Well, Marcus Stroman has completed his warm-ups. He's set to go. This will be his third start of the spring. They hope that he can go four innings this afternoon. He'll face Mookie Betts to start things off. Here's the first pitch of the ball game. It's in there for a strike, and we are underway. Betts hit 291 a year ago with the Red Sox. Cut on and missed, and Stroman quickly ahead. 24-year-old Stroman making his third start of the spring. He made his last start Sunday. That was at the Astros. Went three innings, giving up just an earned run. Foul back, and that was a, an abbreviated delivery, if you will. Something Joe will talk about as the day goes on. Russell Martin, the catcher, and Marcus Stroman tinkering a little bit with his release times. Hit in the air. Junior Lake is in center field. Betts is retired one down. The starting pitchers are brought to you by Scott's Turf Builder Green Max Lawn Food. Get a deep green lawn in just three days. Well, as I said, Marcus pitching in his third game, and he is just at a point now in his career. He's staying healthy after that unfortunate, devastating injury last spring, getting his work in, building up as he looks to a much brighter 2016 season. This is Brock Holt. Holtz at shortstop this afternoon, and we mentioned he made an all-star team last year as a super utility player. And Yost picked him to the all-star team. There's an inside pitch just off the plate. Joe, these players are invaluable with this day and age of having to take 13 pitchers. Well, they really are. And the other thing is there's so many injuries in this game now. You get a Brock Holt that can play all around the field for you. That's a huge asset for a manager. You know that you can pencil him in the lineup, but where you put him defensively really does not matter. Two and one to the Red Sox shortstop. On the corner, it's even at 2-2. Two -two. Another fly ball. It is we breezy as you can hear in the microphones. Dalton Pompey makes the catch, and everything in the air is going to be an adventure. Let's take a look at the entire defense for the Blue Jays. Pompey, Lake, and Pereira around the outfield. Matt Dominguez is at third base. Gio Myers the shortstop. Darwin Barney's had a good start to his spring. He's playing second base. Smokes at first, and the pitcher and Russell Mike making his fourth start. Russell stayed back from the road trip against the Rays on Wednesday in Port Charlotte. He caught Stroman in the bullpen. He also caught Drew Storen. These are very invaluable times for a catcher staying back from a road trip, getting acclimated, getting to know Marcus even more. They have a long chat after the bullpen session, but especially to see Drew Storen, somebody that he'll catch an awful lot this season. Travis Shaw bounces it on two hops to smoke. He'll flip to Stroman. Easy inning for Marcus Stroman. Three up, three down. The knuckleballer Stephen Wright will be on the mound when we come back. For our master of
The skipper John Gibbons enjoying a good spring so far. Pretty much everybody is healthy and they've been able to get a good read on some of the younger players and they're going to see some of those younger players this afternoon. Take a look at the lineup for the Blue Jays. Long Pompey, top of the order, Darwin Barney and then Russell Martin, the veteran. Last year he had big numbers against the ALEs. Ten home runs and 36 RBIs and an OPS nearing 800. And right behind him. How about the season Justin Smoke put together? 14 of his 18 home runs came against right-handed pitching, and Smoke's off to a good start this spring. Let's take a look at the 31-year-old knuckleballer, Stephen Wright. Wright making his second start of the spring. He appeared in 16 games for the Red Sox last season. Nine of those were starts over six different stints in Boston. This knuckleballer provides a lot of versatility for John Farrell and the Red Sox. This is a guy you can rush up from triple a and send him back down he can pitch out of the bullpen he can start again a nice valuable piece take a look at the defense it's castile bradley jr and Betts. this looks to be the opening day lineup for the red sox in the outfield a little bit different story on the infield that's travis shaw at third rock holt and marrero up the middle alan craig's at first and christian vasquez making his second start of the spring he missed the entire season a year ago mookie Betts, tommy john right field and Mookie is limited action in the major leagues at in right field but with Bradley in center and Castillo in left as you said a very good defense in the outfield and especially a big right field at Fenway Park first pitch strike in there to Dalton Pompey Pompey has played eight games so far this spring he's three for 16 he's hit a home run already this has popped up wind is blowing it toward the seats from foul ground Travis Shaw gets over there and makes the catch and foul territory one down. Wind is really howling. It has been all spring long and today is no exception. Always a challenge for outfielders and infielders on a day like this, Joe. First thing you do as a defender is you have to know when you get to the ballpark how that wind is blowing, especially when it's as strong as it is today. Nice job there by Travis Shaw. Played that wind nicely into foul territory. This is the second baseman, Darwin Barney. He takes strike one. Barney has six hits this spring. You see his numbers from a year ago with the Blue Jays. Stephen Wright, like R.A. Dickey, a knuckleballer, but Wright has always toyed with the knuckleball. He grew up in California and went to college in Hawaii. Pitched at the University of Hawaii. Was drafted by the Cleveland Indians in the second round. Spoke with R.A. the other day about Stephen Wright. And Wright actually reached out to R.A. was a couple of years ago and trying to use him as a mentor and grab any kind of knowledge he can get from the veteran. Off the end of the bat, Rock Holt gobbles it up across the diamond in time. Two up, two down. Well, you know what? There aren't too many knuckleball professors around the game. <laughs> <laughs> it's a very small fraternity. It sure is. Tim Wakefield, of course, has worked with Wright, the former Red Sox knuckleballer. Both Dickey and Wright have been mentored by Charlie Huff, longtime Major League pitcher. Yeah, you could, you know, the phone book is only about five <laughs> names deep. This is the catcher, Russell Martin. I mentioned Russell's great season a year ago against the AL East. Career high 23 home runs for the Blue Jays backstop. Christian Vasquez has that go off the webbing of his glove. You mentioned Vasquez missed the entire 2015 season because of his Tommy John surgery. Joe, everybody always talks about pitchers coming back, but we've had a couple of instances in the AL East of catchers dealing with Tommy John surgery. Yeah, big prospect, Christian Vasquez. We're going to see a lot of him along with Blake Swihart behind the plate, probably for the Red Sox, but he's come back. He played some winter ball in Puerto Rico to try to prepare for this season. Of course, the all-star gold glove catcher with the Baltimore Orioles is a year further removed from Tommy John surgery. That's Matt Weeders. Martin in a hole, one and two.
R.A. had high praise for Stephen Wright. He said that he really feels that the first thing you have to do is be able to throw a strike with knuckleballs. He can do that, but he's got a very good feel. R.A. said that when he's out of the game, Stephen Wright could be that next knuckleballer to come through. Well, Wright is 31 years old, and obviously we know that it's just a matter of getting command of that pitch and have the potential of logging a lot of innings. Here's the full count pitch. Cut on and miss. Martin strikes out. Another three up, three down inning. We played an inning here in Dunedin. No score. Program brought to you by Scott's Turf Builder Grass Seed with Water Smart Plus Coating. Grows grass quicker and thicker. Guaranteed. That's the harbor here in Dunedin, the marina not far from this ballpark, just a couple blocks away. And it's a gorgeous afternoon, as we mentioned. A little bit windy, but the temperatures have warmed up dramatically. 26 degrees at the start of play here this afternoon. Four degrees in Toronto. It's warming up up north as well. Alan Craig will step in to start the top half of the second for Boston. Marcus Stroman retired to side and order in the first. Cut on and fouled off Craig. And sinking fastball moving well. Joe, what do you want to see from Marcus Stroman today? I think Marcus is just looking to build off each outing. He's continuing to use a lot of pitches and that's one thing when you have a variety of pitches like that he's trying to hone in on all of them I think always looking for that sinker that fastball location but being able to throw those off speed pitches behind in the count keeping hitters off balance the one thing we're seeing from Marcus this spring and he's talked about it he's altered his delivery at times you'll, you'll see him speed it up a little bit and the challenge with that is being able to still repeat that delivery and get your release point Russell Martin talked about that the other day oh and two Chopped over the mound. Gio Meyer behind the back can't make the play. It should be an infield hit for Alan Craig. Meyer playing at shortstop, making his fourth start. That ball was hit right off the end of the bat. He was coming across the bag. Chopped it over the mound. It looked like Gio was going to try to get down, just didn't get down far enough. And sometimes you have to know your base runner, Alan Craig, not a real speedster. I think Gio may have had a little more time than he thought. That's the thing that's interesting about spring training. That's rule the base hit, but you can see it wasn't hit very high. This is Brennan Bosch, formerly of the Detroit Tigers. He's played in New York. He's also spent some time with Cincinnati and the Angels. Well, he was a top prospect for Detroit. Looked like he was really going to put things together there with the Tigers. Hit 42 home runs over three seasons. In a tiger uniform. Tell you what, Joe, looks like he is really trimmed up. He's in great shape. So Marcus Trimmel, when he comes to his set position now, as he's coming up set, he'll twist his body and watch him do that with runners on base. And when I asked him about that, he said that he was caught, he thinks, tipping pitches. 
last year and even a little bit when he first came up. So you see that twist right there. He's really trying to hide the baseball. Breaking ball down and in and Marsh strikes out. Well, if they were tipping his pitches, they weren't getting many hits off him. He was 4-0 <laughs> with a 167 earned run average. They didn't pick up much. Very good breaking ball, but see him twisting right here. And what happens is sometimes when pitchers come set, if the hitter can see the glove in that hand, they may see some movements with the fingers in his glove. Maybe he does certain things on the curveball. Maybe he does a certain movement with the changeup. This eliminates all that. He's basically trying to hide his hands as he gets the grip on the baseball for the pitch that's been called by Russell. Martin with a snap throw to first, and Craig is back in diving. Russell, keep you on your toes, Joe. It's a good idea, too. Russell, we know how well he throws the ball down to second base when base runners try to steal, but it's a good thing for a catcher, even if it's not even a close play at first base. Come up and fire it down there. Now that entire Red Sox lineup knows they need to be on their toes. Well, if you can shorten up a lead at first, it might help you on the other end. A secondary lead by a base runner a lot of times is the difference when he advances two bases on a base hit instead of one. On first base, if you can freeze that runner a little bit, maybe he just has to go station to station. Breaking ball, gloved by Dominguez, gets up and fires across the diamond. What a nice play by Matt Dominguez starting at third. That may have been extra bases had he gotten past him. Extra bases, and it could have been the first run of this ball game. What an outstanding job. Not a lot of time for a third baseman. You'll see when they come set, they're already fairly low because they know that they're close to the hitter. Great job by Dominguez. And how about the biggest cheerleader in the field right here? He's standing on the mound. Thank you very much for that play. Matt Dominguez was the everyday third baseman for the Astros in 2013 and 2014. Two outs now for Jackie Bradley Jr. Boy, Stroman is a real challenge for hitters, isn't he? He presents so many different looks and different pitches, changes the, speeds. The fastball averages around 92, but he's got curveball, slider, cutter, and changeup, and he has the ability to throw them at any time. Can that be a problem for a young pitcher, Joe, to have too many weapons? I think it can, but I don't think it's a problem for Marcus Stroman. This kid is very, very special. And again, Russell will talk a lot about that. The catcher has the best seat in the house. And when you hear some of the comments from Martin, such as that right there, he can throw the pitches to both sides of the plate. But he's very good with all of them. Most times as a catcher, and you know, but a pitcher's got his first pitch and then his next best pitch. Marcus has three and four more next best pitches. That ball just disappeared down and into Bradley. It's two and two. And as Russell talked about earlier, too, when he's altering that delivery, changing things up, he still has to achieve that release point, get to where he needs to be. And you can see with that pitch right there, working it out front beautifully. Another breaking ball, another strikeout. A couple of strike bouts in the inning. Infield base hit, but nothing more. Marcus Strowman off to a good start this afternoon. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, it's that time already. Middle of the second.
would lead things off for the Blue Jays in the bottom of the second with more on Justin Smoke. Let's check in with our sideline reporter, Hazel May. Buck, you'll notice this spring that Justin Smoke is looking a lot more quieter and calmer there at the plate, and that is by design. Now, because he did play regularly last year, he developed issues with his timing. So hitting coaches Brooks Jacoby and Eric Owen suggested that Smoke get more even at the plate, and that is to really distribute his weight more 50-50. Now, Owens told me that last season, Smoke would hang a little bit with that front foot and get exposed to the breaking ball. Now, when his feet are more even, as you see, he's closer to the ground, and he's able to get his swing off a whole lot better. I asked Smoke about this earlier this morning. He told me he has noticed a big difference, but particularly in making contact with that baseball. Justin Smoke is... Already hit two home runs. Got a pair of doubles to go along with it. So, so far, so good with the subtle adjustment. You can see the Red Sox doing their shift now as Brock Holt stays in his position at shortstop. There's an off speed pitch that slow knuckle got him that time. Well, it's a special challenge today, too, against a knuckleballer. But one thing Justin's trying to do is being more 50 50. Now you're allowing your hands to go back as that stride foot goes forward to get your load before you explode forward. Sometimes what Justin did, because he was more leaning on that back leg, that weight distribution, he would sway forward a little bit. When you sway forward, and especially when your hands come with you, it's a problem. That ball is going to get down for a base hit. Jackie Bradley Jr. over to cut it off. And Justin Smoke with his sixth hit of the spring leads it off with a single here in the second. This is a real challenge for hitters against knuckleball pitchers, but this is perfect for what Justin Smoke is working on right now. Really trying to stay 50-50 with that weight distribution, allowing the ball to travel. That's mostly the approach for hitters against the knuckleball that plays right into his hands for Smoke today. So Smoke's aboard for Dominic Brown, who's the DH here this afternoon. Brown signed late. In the offseason, just before spring training, he's trying to catch on as an extra outfielder with his ball club. He takes strike one. You may notice that John Gibbons has, by design, let a lot of the regulars take the rest of the day off here this afternoon with a knuckleballer on the mound. What's the thinking behind that, Joe? Well, you know, there's not a whole lot of hitters that are signing up to play a spring training game <laughs> against the knuckleballer. Some of the big boys played yesterday, and I think Gibby plans on playing them all tomorrow and Sunday as well. It's a perfect day off. Why mess with their timing? I talked to Ryan Goins earlier today. He feels really locked in right now. He said that's the last thing he needs right now is to have to try to time a knuckleball. And ball gets away from Vasquez, and Smoke jogs into second. It's a wild pitch charge to Stephen Wright. Not much you can do about these. This is the unnecessary evil, per se, against, against an knuckleball pitcher, and Vasquez does the best he can. You're just not going to field all of these pitches cleanly. Very difficult. Vasquez does a nice job, and the Blue Jays know very well the job that Josh Tolley does behind the plate with R.A. Dickey. Two and one. Outside, now it's three balls. I caught a knuckleballer in Anaheim the late Bruce Del Canton when we were both in Kansas City and I had a few of those trips back to the <laughs> backstop one afternoon. Don Drysdale was the announcer about the fifth inning. He says, Buck must know everybody in that front row now. <laughs> <laughs> That's ball four. So, all right. Gives up a base hit and a walk. Two board. Nobody out for Junior Lake. It's a humbling experience for a catcher because when you think you're a good defensive catcher and you have real good hands and that's the strength of your game and then you have to try to take that on. It's just what's going to happen with a knuckleball pitcher. Unfortunately, they are going to have to put up with some of those balls going to the backstop. I don't think Russell Mike would call it a humbling experience. <laughs> Russell said, I did not sign up for this. Did not sign up for that for sure. But when the pitcher doesn't know where it's going, the catcher certainly doesn't know where it's going, so it's a real challenge to catch a knuckleball. No score. We're in the bottom of the second. Junior Lake. Bats with two on and nobody out. Big swing and a miss. Very late swing right there by Junior Lake, but again, a lot of the, a lot of hitters will have that approach, that philosophy against a knuckleball pitcher. They're trying to allow that ball to get very deep in their stance so that they don't go out and get it. Lake will turn 27 
on the 27th of March. He bunts it and bunts it right off the bill of his helmet. He squared around and it doesn't look like it hit him in the head, just knocked his helmet off. It's hard enough to hit a knuckleball. Junior Lake's trying to bunt one. Looked like it just snuck right under the bill of his helmet, just missing his face. Lake has just two sacrifice bunts in his big league career. He didn't look very comfortable when they asked him to square around. Oh, and two. Interesting, Lake having to wait on right, get the right pitch. He's a knuckleballer. Tried to cross him up. Fastball back to the mound. Holt to first, double play. Well, just like R.A. Dickey, Stephen Wright, he knows he's got to field his position, made a nice play to start the double play. We've seen R.A. Dickey do it in the Blue Jays uniform, fields his position very well. And this is where a pitcher can really help himself. This ball could have been going up the middle if he does not make this play. Instead, it's a 1-6-3 double play. Stephen Wright now one pitch from getting out of this mess. Good turn by Holt. Two down now, man at third as Smoke advanced on the double play. This is Matt Dominguez who made that fine defensive play at third base. Triple-A numbers for Dominguez split his time between Houston and Milwaukee in the minor leagues last year. Pulled on the ground. Travis Shaw stays down, makes a play, and after two on nobody out, Stephen Wright gets out of it. Still scoreless here in Dunny. On Rogers NHL Game Center Live. Bye. Thank you very much, Hazel. We move to the top of the third. Marcus Stroman. A couple of strikeouts. He's allowed an infield hit. Nothing more through two innings. Scheduled to go four here this afternoon. This is Devin Marrero playing second base today. Marrero's in a tough spot, Joe. He's a middle infielder. They got Xander Bogarts at short who plays every day. He's 23 years old. They got a gold glove MVP second baseman in Dustin Pedroia. Pedroia guy's not bad either. That's right. Stroman looks like he's had enough spring training. It's time to go north. <laughs> he is one excitable young man. Continue to see with Marcus's delivery. We talked about that abbreviated delivery where he's trying to you want to call it a quick pitch What he's doing he's trying to vary his times pitchers do it from the stretch position with runners on base all the time Bouncing ball Dominguez has to take it on a short hop. He still has time to throw out Marrero. 
you don't often see it from starting pitchers from the windup. We saw most notably in the big leagues from Johnny Cueto last year throughout the playoffs. But what Marcus will do is he'll speed it up once in a while, and it's all about offsetting that timing of the hitters. Nice job by Dominguez again right here, showing his defensive prowess, staying back on that baseball, getting himself a good hop. Blue Jays have some young infielders. Andy Burns has had a nice spring. Gio Myers played well, and now Matt Dominguez has made a couple good plays here already. This is the catcher, Christian Vasquez. Vasquez is from Puerto Rico. We mentioned he had Tommy John surgery and missed the entire 2015 season. There's one of those abbreviated deliveries right there. And the difference right there is that it was a breaking ball. And this is what Russell Martin's talking about. So Marcus abbreviates the delivery, but watch how he does not quite get up front in the curveball. And that's a hanging curveball. That's not a good one. Another breaking ball. This one hit to right. Carrera gets back and makes a nice play on it. Ball cut back towards him, and he stayed with it for the out. That's why when Russell Martin talks about that as a catcher, you have the best seat in the house. And Russell's concern is for Marcus to continue to work on this if he's going to do it because you have to get that timing right. Russell talked about getting, trying to repeat that delivery and getting to that release point. If you hurry with your body, then your arm trails a little bit. It's a little bit late. And that was the result of that hanging curveball we saw. Then it certainly becomes counterproductive. You don't finish your pitches. Back to the top of the order, Mookie Betts, the right fielder. Goes after that first pitch. Marcus Stroman, for his career, is a perfect 4 0 against the Boston Red Sox. And Joe, the most interesting aspect of his record 4 0, he's averaged 14.7 pitches per inning against the Red Sox, the most patient team in baseball. Such a variety of pitches, he can use them all, but he continues to come after hitters. There's that cutter just off the outside corner. He'll mix in that cutter at around 90, 91 miles per hour, and that's just to get off the barrel of the right-handed batter away. See Russell setting up out there again. Lined into center field. That's going to get down for a base hit. Maybe playing on a hop. Betts has a base hit. Okay, now we got a challenge for Strowman. Let's see if Mookie Betts is in the running mood. Got a pitcher on the mound that's very good, very cognizant of his time to the plate, his delivery, and then one of the best in the game behind the plate. Sometimes division rivals don't like to show their hand in spring training, but to see if Betts wants to run here. Not going inside the hole. Bookie Betts was 21 of 27 during the regular season a year ago. A true example of power and speed. At 68 extra base hits and 21 steals, and Stroman tries to knock it down behind his back. Myers there to pick him up. A two out single. Red Sox leave a runner. We move to the bottom of the third.
MLB.TV Premium, everything you have come to expect and more. There's a new low price for 2016. Watch every out-of-market game of all 30 teams live in true HD on over 400 supported devices. Blackout and other restrictions apply. Visit MLB.TV for details. Great way to follow your favorite team. Certainly you want to keep track of the Blue Jays and Jays are having a good spring. They have lost just one game. They've won eight and tied one. They've hit 12 home runs in the first 10 games of the spring. That's a familiar trademark of the Blue Jays. Bottom of the order, 8-9-1 for the Jays here against Stephen Wright. Ezequiel Carrera. A season ago hit 273 in the big leagues. Carrera will turn 29 in June. Seems to be a wide open battle for that extra outfielder spot. Talking to John Gibbons every day, and he just seems to continue to say everyone's contributing. Everybody's doing their part to make it very interesting. You know what he said? He said everybody's playing well. They're pitching well. They're playing well as position players, and nobody has really separated themselves from the pack. Blue Jays made a couple of roster moves today. They sent down the right-handed pitcher Will Browning and the youngster Connor Green, 20-year-old. He went back to the minor league camp. Both of those pitchers shipped out to the Bobby Maddox complex to join their minor league teams. That's chopped toward third. Nice play by Travis Shaw. Well, he looks good over there at third base. He's naturally a first baseman. He played all over the infield, but... Brian Butterfield, the infield coach, loves what he sees from Shaw at third. Well, he loves what he sees from him. He loves working with him. And what a nice play right here coming to get this baseball. As a third baseman, he's coming to try to get that before that short hop. He was not able to quite get there, but he does give himself a very tiny hop, which he picks cleanly, makes a good throw. That's a nice play against a speedy base runner in Carrera. This is Gio Meyer, the shortstop. How often up here do we talk about speed putting pressure on the defense? Shaw did not feel the pressure there. John Farrell, the Red Sox manager, was talking about the AL East division and how prominent the third basemen are defensively. He said you got Manny Machado, the gold glover in Baltimore. You've got Longoria with the Rays. Of course, Donaldson with the Blue Jays. He said, we're a little bit behind the curve defensively at third base with Sandoval. Travis Shaw did such a nice job for the Red Sox last season when he came up. It's almost as though, again, you're trying to find a spot for this guy. With Hanley Ramirez moving over to first base, he's kind of getting boxed out of that area as well. Off the end of the bat, that's going to drop for a base hit. Ooh, nice play by Mookie Betts. That ball shot on him as it hit the ground, but he was able to extend and keep Meyer to a long single. It was a good recovery that time by Mookie Betts. We talked in the open now. He's sliding over to right field, has not gotten a lot of major league experience in right field. He has to understand now in right field from a right-handed batter, this ball slicing away from him. He underestimated that just a bit. But again, he's got that tremendous speed, and that's why the Red Sox are going to move him over to right field because of the very spacious right field at Fenway Park. Don Pompey. In the leadoff spot, Pompey popped out to the third baseman in foul ground his first time up. I asked Dalton, sometimes switch hitters will bat right-handed, even though it's a righty knuckleballer on the mound. We've seen hitters do that against Dickey. He said he batted right-handed one time against Stephen Wright last year in the minor leagues, and he almost got hit by a fastball in the face. So he said, no more of that. I'm staying left-handed. <laughs> and goes the runner. Now he shuts it down, the snap throw, as Meyer slides in ahead of the tag at first. Meyer broke towards second, didn't like his break, and then Vasquez nearly picked him off. 
Well, he didn't like his break, and you have to remember, Stephen Wright is fairly quick to the plate. It could have been just a bluff, but you better not bluff too much over there with Vasquez behind the plate. I don't care about the Tommy John surgery. This man can still throw very well. Strike two. Christian Vasquez, when he took over in 2014 as the everyday catcher, he threw out 51% of the base stealers. One of the best percentages in all of baseball. He's got a real cannon for an arm. Looks like they're going to throw to first. That's a pretty good move. Very quick feed on the mound. The one thing for a catcher that's a challenge with a knuckleball pitcher, even though he's quick to the plate with his delivery, the challenge is catching the ball cleanly and transferring that ball from the very large enlarged catcher's mitt that catchers use against knuckleballers into your throwing hand and getting a good grip. Fly ball into center. Jackie Bradley Jr. Rangers back makes the catch. Pompey's retired. Meyer retreats to first. Two down now for Darwin Barney, the second baseman. That's Tim Leeper at first. First base coach. Leeper and Luis Rivera on the coaching lines for the Blue Jays. Tim Leeper has that stopwatch in his left hand, and I'm sure he's telling Gio right now, you can try, but Stephen Wright is very quick to the plate. He's between 1-1 one, one and 1 1.2 seconds with his delivery. Any pitcher that stays around 1-3 or under is going to give his catcher a pretty good shot at throwing a runner out. Darwin Barney re-signed with the Blue Jays in the offseason. He came over to the Jays in a deal from the Dodgers in September he wasn't eligible to be added to the postseason roster as he wasn't in the Blue Jays organization on the 31st of August interesting addition to the organization it gives them a lot of versatility around the infield it's a nice piece Darwin did a nice job up with the Blue Jays towards the end of the season last year and what he is is he's a major leaguer and that's what's going to really help if he has to spell Ryan Goins at second base one day maybe Gogo -Go replaces Tulo at short well then the whole Brock Holt long throw in time the all-star Brock Holt in support of Stephen Wright ends the inning on the 6-3 ground out Scott's Turf Builder Grass Seed with Water Smart Plus Coating. Grows grass quicker and thicker. Guaranteed. Beautiful Saturday afternoon. That's the Sunshine Skyway. And that's being St. Petersburg with Bradenton. Bright sunny day. A lot of the ladies have their hats on to protect them from the sun. And 
Good crowd on hand. They have packed the seats here at Florida Auto Exchange Stadium. Travis Shaw, he's put on the show so far defensively at third. Trying to get something going against Marcus Stroman. The Red Sox have two hits, as do the Blue Jays. No one has scored yet. Travis Shaw is the son of a former Major League pitcher, Jeff Shaw, who pitched 12 years in the big leagues. Jeff Shaw began his career with the Indians, pitched in Montreal in 93 and 94, Old part team. of 95. Yeah, Old you know, of mine. I know Jeff. Jeff very well. Good right-handed pitcher. What a pitch, boy. Marcus Stroman is in mid-season form. And this is what we talked about earlier. When Russell says he can throw any pitch in any count to both sides of the plate, here's the example right there. And this, to me, looks like a backdoor cutter. It's something he's working on. It's a mini slider. That's what it is. But he starts it off the plate away as a left-handed batter. You give up on it right there. And then it comes back just enough to catch that corner. Alan Craig had an infield single right over the bag. At second, his first time up. Craig had some good seasons with the St. Louis Cardinals. In particular, 2012-2013, he drove in 92 and 97 runs respectively. But he hasn't been able to Get that stroke back here with the Red Sox again behind the bag at second. This time, Meyer throws him out. Almost a carbon copy of his infield hit. Like Darwin Barney over at shortstop came across that time. It looked like they switched it up on us, but this ball again over the head. And you let Stroman just leaves it right away. He's just placing D form it behind me, guys. And the former Gold Glover does it from the shortstop side this time. Yeah, that's the aspect that we will see in spring training, especially with guys like Barney, where they're going to move him around and give him all different looks during the course of his game. And it's a great idea by John Gibbons. I just wish they'd let us know a little bit more often. <laughs> <laughs> but that's what Darwin's going to do. He'll fill in at second, short, third, and he'll be that super utility guy. Josh Donaldson will need a day off once in a while. He'll find himself at third. Brennan Bosch quickly behind 0 and 2. Bosch will strike out victim in the second. You get a tough lefty and maybe want to give Ryan Goins the day off at second base. Barney can play. Or if you want to give Tulu a day, Goins can slide over to short. Barney can play second. Another good pitch. Another good inning. Three up, three down here in the fourth. Marcus Stroman with four strikeouts.
And Sportsnet Magazine takes you one-on-one -on -one with the Blue Jays' biggest stars, including Josh Donaldson, Marcus Stroman, Troy Tulowitzki, Jose Batista, and more. It's the Blue Jays edition. Download it now at sportsnet.ca slash magazine. Bye. Thank you very much, Hazel. The season opener, not that far away. Blue Jays will open up on Sunday, April 3rd, part of a three-game schedule to open up the 2016 season. The Jays will be in St. Petersburg to play the Tampa Bay Rays, and then they'll come home to open up against the Boston Red Sox on April 8th, the Friday night game. This is Russell Martin, the catcher. Martin struck out his first time up on that slow knuckleball. Takes a strike. Russell told me before this game today, he was anxious to catch Stroman because he said, I haven't caught him this spring. I haven't caught him a lot, obviously, because Stroman made just four starts during the regular season. So there's always something to accomplish in spring training, no matter how few at bats or how few innings you're going to catch. So important. As I said, Russell stayed back Wednesday from that road trip. He caught Stroman on the side. Then he caught Drew Storen. He needs to see Marcus Lotz before the season. Just did not get that with the injury last year to Marcus. Joe, it must be especially challenging for a catcher given the complete complement of pitches Stroman deals with. Well, it is, and we talked about it. It's a nice problem to have because as a catcher, you feel confident that you can call any pitch in any count. Martin rips a base hit to left field. Ball stayed him. Well, we talk about the Blue Jays and the Red Sox, of course, the AL East rivals. And there are a lot of early games on the schedule. You see the Blue Jays open up at home against the Red Sox in that three-game series, the 8th, 9th, and 10th of April. And then they will go into Boston. That will be a four-game wraparound series at Fenway Park, including the 18th on Patriots Day. That's the day game, the day of the Boston Marathon. The Blue Jays will play in that 11 o'clock game. So they'll see one another quite a bit, including two games in Montreal on April 1st and 2nd. Not a lot of secrets between these two ball clubs. This is Justin Smoke. He had a single into right center his first time up. Takes a strike. It's a ball and a strike. Again, they put the exaggerated shift. This time, they leave the double play combination intact and put the third baseman between first and second. Off the end of the bat, looping liner, gloved by Brock Holton, short. Smoke might have caught that one on the end of the bat. You can try to convince yourself as much as you can as a hitter that you're going to allow that knuckleball to travel. Let it get deep in your stance so that you do not go out and jump out and get after it. But easier said than done when it's coming sometimes in the mid-70s in terms of miles per hour. A hitter's ego will always get him in trouble. He's going, wait, wait, wait. No, I can't wait that long. And you'll swing. <laughs> this is Dominic Brown at DH this afternoon. A year ago, Boston took the season series 10-9. to The Blue Jays out-homered the Red Sox 24-22 to for the season. One thing you can count on when these two teams hook up, a lot of runs are going to be scored. Between the two of them, they averaged over 11 runs per game. John Farrell, in his fourth season with the Red Sox, spent two years as the Blue Jays' manager. John Gibbons was invited back for a second tour of duty. High fly ball. Betts and Bradley converging. Bradley gives way to the right fielder. Two down. Well, they're both hitter-friendly ballparks when you talk about Rogers Center and Fenway Park, and then you've got two teams that do hit for Bauer. Of course, the Blue Jays. Red Sox, not so much last year as much as they have in the past, but these are... Two teams that can swing the bats and with both of their rotations and when you look at this division in general It's open season really and you may think that the Orioles may be lagging behind a little bit But that late acquisition of Giovanni Gallardo might get them back in the mix I 
think Boston and Toronto right now are the two teams that most people are talking about going to head to head. But you can't forget about the Yankees and you certainly can't forget about the Tampa Bay Rays with that starting rotation, their pitching staff. Tampa Bay Rays anxious to see their healthy starters all together. Last year, their projected rotation started just over half of the 162 games. So they hope to get Cobb back, Moore's back for a full season, Drew Smiley, Odorizzi, and of course Chris Archer, their ace. Junior Lake grounded into a 1 6 3 double play in the second. That's the only real bona fide scoring opportunity we've seen in this ballgame. Blue Jays had runners at first and second, nobody out then. Lake tap back to the pitcher. Ground ball. Holt will shovel to second for the force, and the inning is over. Russell Martin with lead off singles left on base. We move to the fifth. The 2016 Blue Jays season tickets are on sale now. Visit bluejays.com slash season tickets to get yours. But Should be another great season, Hazel. Make sure you check out the season tickets online. The Blue Jays anxious to get their 2016 season underway. Of course, they are the reigning champs of the AL East. Just two games short of going to the World Series. And they have a lot of confidence about a return trip to the postseason and going a little bit deeper. Here's Nick Castillo, the left fielder. Marcus Stroman was scheduled to go four innings, and he's been so efficient, they're going to give him the opportunity to start the fifth. Nice ball up and in. The one thing that Stroman does is he makes you think about swinging. He throws so many pitches in the zone that step, hitters step in the box and they think, okay, I got to get ready to swing. And even though they might be borderline pitches, they've already committed to the swing. Throws a lot of strikes, but I think most importantly for any pitcher, too, and Marcus does it so well, is he makes pitches appear to be strikes as they enter the hitting zone, and then they dart down to the right, to the left, and it's very difficult to square those baseballs up. Yes, Deer goes down. It's a pretty good pitch and rips it into center field. That's the third base hit for the Red Sox against Stroman. He stayed on a pretty good pitch, Joe. That's a nice job by Castillo right there. It's the ball down in the zone, but he keeps his bat on plane a long time. You hear hitting coaches talk about that, keeping that bat on plane. That means keeping the bat in the hitting zone a long time. He hit that at the very end, but was still able to get the barrel on it. 
Castillo's in his third season with the Red Sox. He signed as an international free agent August 23rd of 2014. He's 28 years old. This is Jackie Bradley Jr. Ground ball, this should be to Meyer to Barney back to first. It is a double play, and just like that, Stroman erases that leadoff single. Marcus Stroman has this newfound sinker, and I say newfound, he found it last year, but the way he utilizes it now, he is able to get ground balls at any time. Having a base runner is not a problem. He knows the pitch he can go to. Well, Marcus Stroman pits beyond four. What a good outing for the young right hander. He goes four and two thirds, punctuates it by a double play. Another good outing for Marcus Stroman. Good start to his spring. Three good ones in a row. year old break McFarlane actually he's turned 29 on the 28th of February see his numbers from double A and triple A he was a non drafted sign out of San Jose State in California this is his sixth season with the Blue Jays organization he reached Buffalo last year pitched in eight games in triple A he's a big guy had a nice season he got with Rick Langford after the 2013 season he told me he's gone to exclusively the four seam fastball he's trying to work the zone up and down more as opposed to side to side in one pitch that he really learned from Langford he throws a very good split finger pitch right now he feels that it's been the difference for him in these last two seasons he's a big guy he gets good leverage and gets on top of that pitch six five two twenty three and he throws a strike. Devin Marrero, the second baseman. Batting eighth in this lineup. Two outs were in the top half of the fifth inning of this scoreless game. Might have been that splitter right there. But you can see how he does get on top of that baseball. And this is a case where not all pitchers are the same. It's not a cookie cutter type thing where you can just teach everybody to do the same thing. Why not use your abilities and maximize them? And it looks like that's what Lankford has done trying to help McFarlane along. It's made a difference in his last two seasons. A play by Matt Dominguez at third. A little soft liner. He dives to his left to end the inning. Blake McFarlane comes out of the pin to close it out. Marcus okay. Stroman goes four and two thirds. Matt Dominguez having a good day with the glove at third. Another fine play to end the top half of the fifth. He's a four time
Blue Jays fans, if you're catching a game in the U.S., you can share all your experiences as they happen with friends and fans back home. With Rome like home from Rogers, you can use your phone exactly like you do at home, starting at $5 a day in the U.S. Go to rogers.com slash Rome like home for details. Thank you, Hazel. A lot of Canadians here for spring training, and you see all the Ontario plates, a lot of Quebec plates as well. New pitcher for the Red Sox, Carlos Moma, the former closer of the Chicago Cubs. Last year spent 28 games in AAA. Veteran of nine major league seasons with the Cubs, Dodgers, and Marlins. Yeah, he just over two last year in AAA, almost 14 strikeouts per nine innings. It was his only season in the Indians organization. Matt Dominguez grabbed to third base, his only time up. All these hitters for the Blue Jays now say, okay, now we can really focus. <laughs> Got the knuckleballer out of the game. That's lifted down the left field line. That's a fair ball. Castillo over to cut it off, hustles it back in, and that'll keep Matt Dominguez to a long single leadoff single here in the bottom of the fifth. Well, we are pleased to be joined now by the Blue Jays starting pitcher Marcus Stroman. And Marcus, congratulations. You go two in your first outing, three in your second outing, and now four and two thirds. How'd you feel today? Felt great. Felt great. Uh, first one at home, so get out here in front of the home crowd. Uh, everyone's loud, everyone's energetic, so it's good, uh, good pitching in this atmosphere. Marcus, how big of an impact is your catcher, Russell Martin? I saw him catch your side session the other day when you stayed back from that road trip. But then there's always that conversation after. How big is it for you to have that veteran helping you along? It's huge. I mean, um, the relationship that we've developed over the past, whatever it is, year, um, he's just really gotten to know me as a pitcher. And my mix is just coming off him basically pretty much. And whatever he's feeling, he's thrown down. And we usually have a pretty good, pretty good vibe going. And whenever we have it going, um, I'm usually getting ground balls and, and getting guys out. So Russell's great, man. Uh, catch and throw, uh, pitch calling. Um, he's an all-around guy. Marcus, we talked a lot today about your varying your release, your shortening your stride from time to time. Talk about what made you think about this and implementing it this spring. Just always trying to get better. Um, anything that I can add to my game that will help or that will throw hitters' timings off, uh, I, I always pick hitters' brains always and just try to get their uh, point of view, perspective from what kind of throws them off, um, what other pitchers do that throws them off, and it seems to be uh, timing is always a thing that throws guys off. So I've been talking about Tista a lot, talked to Tulo, um, and just trying to implement some new things that that'll help me and that'll make the game much easier for me. How difficult is that, Marcus? How are you finding it so far? We we saw some pitches very very good today. I may note that the one curveball looked like you just you were a little bit late on it. How is that that timing so far here early in the spring for you? It's pretty good. It's pretty good. I uh, just got to really just focus on sitting on my backside when I decide to go to it. Um, but it, it's a product of my body. My body feels great. My body feels really strong, so it's allowing me to do things in my motion um, that I wouldn't normally to do. And uh, I feel like I have great balance through it out. Marcus, that's been a theme in this camp, the high-performance philosophy that uh, Mark Shapiro has brought in. Talk about how you see the changes in this camp. I see them from afar, but you see them from the inside. How have things improved in the conditioning, the physical therapy, and all of the rehab stuff going on in the clubhouse? It's just more of an emphasis point on um, We're really focusing on our body, doing everything we can to prepare and make sure that we're ready to go out there and grind every single day. So the new people that were brought in, we also had the opportunity of bringing some guys. Um, actually, Nikki Huffman from my staff at Duke, who's um, extreme. She's a genius, and uh, she's been helping a ton of the guys. So um, it's definitely, definitely what we're doing is, is productive to us, and it's helping put our bodies um, in a better position to go out there, move freely, feel stronger, and recover quicker. So uh, it, it's all a good process. I know your disciple, obviously. You saw the results firsthand. How are the rest of the players adjusting to the new philosophy? Everyone's loving it. Everyone's loving it. They're starting to see their bodies move better, starting to see that they're stronger while being more flexible. So everyone's buying in, and everyone's on board, and I'm excited. It would have been hard for me to move my body any smoother. <laughs> <laughs> you would have been able to do it, Buck. I promise you. We just had to give it a little more. You would have to get a little more reps. Get back on that yoga mat, Marcus. <laughs> Marcus, talk about how driven this ball club is in the spring. You fall two games shy of going to the World Series a year ago. How does that force you guys to come out here and really put in some good work? Yeah, it just gave us a sense of that we arrived last year. We weren't we weren't down um, when we lost that game last year. It was more of we're here. Um, let's do everything we can to put our bodies in position in the offseason and get back here and take it further. So we have an unbelievably strong, confident, hungry, motivated group of guys. Um, I 
I mean, I, I can't even put that into words, how confident uh, each single guy on this roster is. And we feed off each other, and uh, we're ready to rock. 2-2 pitch, and it's strike three called. i got to ask you, Bryce Harper came out with a great article in the ESPN magazine talking about ball players. We're not allowed to show our emotions, and you're the leader of the pack in that department. <laughs> Talk about your reaction to what Harper said and how baseball might need to change his thinking overall and really kind of emphasize the personalities of you young players. Yeah, I actually talked to Bryce Harper yesterday, man. We had a text conversation for a while, and I'm a, I'm a big supporter. I'm a firm believer of everything he said was was accurate. Um, I agree 100% with everything he says. I'm an emotional guy myself, and uh, baseball over the course of history was something that you had to pull your emotions back. Um, but now with the young wave of guys that we have, the game's becoming more exciting, and we're starting to be more emotional. I'm um, starting to see a little more flair, and it's becoming fun and exciting. So I think it's just um, you have to you have to adapt with the times. You got to adapt with the times, and uh, you got to got to do everything in your power just to enjoy the moment. I agree with you 100%, and I applaud Bryce Harper for coming out. You guys bring a lot to this game, and we saw it, and how it brings the fans out to the ballpark. Marcus, thanks for your thoughts, thanks for your input, and thanks for your time today. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for having me. See you guys soon. Thanks, All right. Marcus. That's Marcus Stroman who had a great outing, and he's right on about that, Joe. I think that, you know, the old baseball mindset has to disappear. Young people in the game want to see the young stars show their emotion. And there are an awful lot of young stars in this game. We've talked about that, too, and it is a little bit of a changing of the guard here, and he is one of them. A lot of young superstars, Bryce Harper, of course, one of those in that conversation as well. It's a great article, ESPN, the magazine. Bryce Harper talks about how baseball is a little bit tardy in getting to the party. Harper's 23 years old. He's already been named Rookie of the Year and MVP. And in four years, Joe, he's had 97 home runs. There's a lot of young stars in the game, including Carlos Correa, just 21 years old. Miguel Sano of the Twins, 22 years old. The Blue Jays are loaded with Osuna Sanchez, Stroman's young players all over the game today. And the game itself is in great hands right now with these young stars and I think what's misconstrued by most people is when you hear that that saying that they're, they're not respecting the game and that is not the case whatsoever and I'm sure Marcus would have talk about that as well it's not about disrespecting the game or your opponent I always said too if you take the emotion out of this game we're we're in trouble you know I think there was a time in the game where players were told don't show any emotion it's an emotional game you played it with joy when you were a youngster and played it for fun. And now when you're playing as a business, I think you should show that same emotion. I respect the comment from someone that as a pitcher, hey, when you get me, you get me. When I get you, I get you. Marma, he gets a couple as he ends up striking out the side after a leadoff single. Pitchers have the upper hand so far this afternoon. The Blue Jays would like to... We'll be back on Sportsnet. Join us Sunday as the Jays host the Tampa Bay Rays. All the action gets underway at 1 p.m. Eastern, 10 a.m. Pacific time. Tampa Bay will be here at Florida Auto Exchange Stadium. And 
get a chance to see the race first and this is Drew Storm. Blue Jays acquired him from the Washington Nationals in exchange for Ben Revere the left fielder and Storm is an interesting addition to this bullpen. He sure is just working in his third game of the spring. I spoke with Drew the other day. He's just he's that veteran relief pitcher that's just trying to build off each outing down here in spring training. Made an interesting comment. He says the more he pitches throughout the course of spring training, that's the velocity just continues to come. And he's a guy that will average about 94 miles per hour. Slider and change up to go with it. AJ Menace is behind the plate. Richard Urena has taken over. Urena taking over at short, and Andy Burns is in left field for Dalton Pompey. Ali Solis took over defensively behind the plate for Christian Vasquez, and he lines out to the right. Drew Storen has been a closer and he's a guy that says you know what I'm over here to help this team win a championship. Storen is 28 years old. He has picked up 95 career saves for the Nationals. And Joe, you talked to Storen about his hesitation and how he uses that to his advantage. Much like we heard from Marcus Stroman, these, hit, these pitchers talk to hitters. They want to know what upsets their timing. And the number one thing is some sort of hesitation in the delivering. We'll see Storen right there. He's just got that little hitch. And that'll upset that timing of the hitter. One thing Drew talked about, too, is not just as a veteran working on your fastball. He's got slider and changeup, but he's got to work on his slider. That's a get over slider or when he's pitching backwards in the count behind the hitter and his put away slider when he's going for a strikeout. Jams Mookie Betts with that inside pitch. He'll also work the changeup in the same manner. He's got a changeup that he'll get over or throw when he's behind in the count. He's got another one that he wants to bounce, but here's that hesitation right there. So right there is just a stop almost before he continues as a hitter when you see that pitcher come up with his leg you're getting your timing going you wanted that thing to be fluid and it's not so that can only help him in terms of trying to upset that timing bounce that ball well in front of home plate it's two balls and two strikes Storen was initially a number one pick of the Nationals in 2009 out of Stanford University. See him spike that pitch in the dirt right there. He told me he did that in his last outing as well, but that's just getting that feel for the release point. That pitch is a breaking ball on the inside corner. He strikes out Mookie Betts. This is not the ideal slider that Drew Storen's trying to throw right here. Sometimes pitchers get away with it. Watch the reaction of Storen after he gets this call. He's happy he gets the call, but he's not happy with the pitch at all. He knows that that ball backed up on him. That's not where he wants that to be. He wants to start that more middle of the plate, and have that dive down and more away to his catcher, but he got away with it. Brock Holt, the shortstop, 0 for 2 so far. Stone's not a real blazer. He won't light up the radar gun, but he really reads bats well. If he sees something at the plate from the hitter, he'll make adjustments off what he sees. And interesting, too, those comments that he made to me about the slider and the changeup. It's almost like four pitches instead of two pitches because he's doing different things with them and then he'll also talk about trying to backdoor that slider to left-handed batter so you just see these veterans they have that savvy and understanding of how they have to get hitters out that's a good breaking ball that catches the outside corner i think joe the one challenge that you want from your pitcher is to make the hitter think of both sides of the play and that makes it very difficult it's one thing as a hitter to think of the change of speeds but now when pitchers can move it around as well it makes it incredibly difficult one two pitch bounce towards second here comes Darwin Bonnie flips it with his glove to smoke good inning for Drew Storen retires the side in order score this game we head to the sixth
fans tomorrow on Sportsnet, a matinee matchup between original six rivals as newly acquired Eric Stahl and the Rangers take on Henrik Setterberg and the Red Wings. Puck drops at 2 Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific time. Puck. Thank you very much, Hazel. There's a good shot of Clearwater Beach. New pitcher into the ball game is the right-hander, Noe Ramirez. 17 games a year ago for the Red Sox. He is not allowed an earned run in three Grapefruit League appearances this year. Made 17 relief appearances. Those were over three different stints with the Red Sox last year after making his Major League debut. Leading out the bottom of six inning for the Blue Jays, the shortstop number 18, Darren Burney. Only seven hits in the ball game. It's a scoreless game as Blue Jays are set to bat in the bottom of the six. Darwin Barney. Then the catcher's position, A.J. Jimenez. First pitch strike. Barney is grounded out twice to the shortstop. Make it three times. This is Marco Hernandez in defensively. It's short as Barney grounds out again. Another 6 3 in the scorebook. Ramirez, the pitcher, will face A.J. Jimenez, the catcher, batting for the first time in relief of Russell Martin. We are joined now by Drew Storen, and Drew, you barely broke a sweat in that one inning out there. Drew, are you with us? Maybe not just yet. Can't hear me. There you go. There you go. How you doing, Drew? I'm good, good. Nice little outing there. I did get some work in and, uh, you know, just getting in the groove. Talk about the breaking ball. You looked like you tried to throw it to both sides of the plate in that outing. Yeah, you know, it's something I like to do is move it both sides and, uh, you know, especially to a righty, working it in. Because um, that's a tough pitch to keep fair. So, uh, you know, good to see some guys freeze on that pitch because that's something that uh, I need to have in my arsenal for this year. Drew, you didn't look overly happy with that one strike. It looked like maybe you're trying to get that thing to bite down glove side and it kind of stayed on the inside, but you got away with it. Is that something for spring training that you're always continuing to try to hone in as you get closer to opening day? Yeah, definitely. You know, you want to be able to spike one here and there. And, uh, you know, like I said, it's a, it's a pitch that, fortunately for me, when it stays around the plate like that on the inside half, I, I can get away with it sometimes. But, uh, you know, it, as, as we move on here in spring, I need to put some in the dirt. Justin Smoke bats with two outs, getting acclimated to a new catcher. What challenges do you face there? Uh, you know, it's just, uh, you know, it's learning and understanding the game that they're calling and then, uh, you know, them understanding my strengths. And uh, so it's been a lot of fun, though, because it gives you an opportunity to learn and, uh, you know, to get better. So I'm having a good time with that. Drew Russell stayed back Wednesday, much like I talked about Stroman earlier. He also caught you on the side, and then I see those conversations after the side sessions. Tell us what those conversations are like for you, too, with the brand-new catcher this season. Yeah, you know, it's about pitch selection and understanding, you know, what kind of sequence I, I, want, I like to do and, uh, you know, also hearing what he likes to do also and seeing my stuff. So uh, it's one of those things that way I'm not out there shaking five times and uh, killing my rhythm. Drew, I want to thank you for your time. Congratulations on another good outing. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. All right, Drew. That's Drew Store in a one, two, three inning of work here this afternoon. Kind enough to join us for a minute. Justin Smoke behind one and two. Two outs in the inning against Noe Rodriguez. Noe Ramirez, excuse me. Off the plate. Ramirez has four outings against the Blue Jays. They've hit him hard. Four hits in just two and two thirds innings. Not much experience. Ramirez wanted that pitch. He was headed toward the dugout. Thought it was strike three. Well, he had some stints with the Red Sox last season. And then now it's that revamped bullpen. If the acquisition of Craig Kimbrell is really going to help out down there, as well as Carson Smith. Those are two big arms. Not to mention, of course, you've still got Uihara and Tazawa. We spoke to John Farrell specifically about Carson Smith. And he said, yeah, he's a real good addition. He can pitch the eighth inning ahead of Craig Kimbrell. And then we can move Uihara and Tazawa down. 
And the last couple of years, they have really overused Tozawa, and he really felt the impact of that. He was shut down in September last year. So they feel pretty good about their bullpen. 3 2 pitch, ball four to smoke, wide one. Two out walk here in the sixth. Of course, the Red Sox, with the big acquisition of Craig Kimbrell and David Price, they brought in Chris Young, a platoon outfielder, recently signed David Murphy, an outfielder. John Berti takes over as a pinch runner at first base. Smoke finishes up his afternoon one for two with a walk at a base hit to center field his first time up. Birdie looks like he wants to run. Not running here. Dominic Brown, a DH. Well, pitching was certainly an issue for these Red Sox last season, both the rotation and that bullpen. And now, of course, with David Price, the headliner in that rotation, they just don't know what they're going to get from Clay Buckholz since that's been a real wild card for them. Rick Porcello, of course, has to be better for John Farrell. Eduardo Rodriguez has had a knee injury this spring. There goes Birdie the throw in time as Ali Solis, the catcher, makes a strong throw to end the inning. Good inning for Noe Ramirez. They head to the seventh, still no score. Birdie with the head first slide, tagged out. Dunedin, 29-year-old Brett Cecil is into the ball game for the Blue Jays. And for more on Cecil, let's check in with Hazel May. Back, Brett Cecil is making his second appearance of the spring, and he continues to work towards getting back from that torn left calf muscle he suffered in the ALDS. Now, he has needed a full winter of rehab, and very early in camp, he said he felt some soreness when running from one field to another, so the decision was made to put him on a separate spring program from the others in order to limit any unnecessary running and fielding drills. Now, I caught up with Cecil this morning, and he said the specialized program, though short-lived, was really Really more or less to keep things in check. He assured me, Buck, that he is now on the same schedule as everyone else and his regimen is back on track. Yeah, that's what everybody wants, as you see John Birdie taking over defensively at second. It's over for Darwin Barney and Brett Cecil. He's anxious to put that injury behind him. But he told me early in the spring it took a lot longer to heal than he anticipated. It was a much more significant tear than originally thought. Which is hard to believe because we heard rumblings during the American League Championship Series that if the Blue Jays won, we may see Brett Cecil pitch in the World Series. Long drive, but well fouled on the right side. Travis Shaw, the third baseman, getting his third at bat of the afternoon. Yeah, you know what? Players will tell you, oh, it'll take me 10 days and I'll be right back and get back on the horse. But it's never 10 days and certainly never 15 days after the disabled list. 
Breaking ball, that patented curveball just misses. Boy, that's a great weapon for Brett Cecil. Well, it's patented, all right, and we saw that an awful lot last year. There were times that I think hitters just know it's coming and they weren't hitting it. And that was against righties and lefties alike, not just a left handed specialist. There's a strikeout as he goes right back to that hook and strikes out Travis Shaw. Good curveball. Cecil threw a different curveball in college. He had his index finger kind of topped over. His second finger is on top of that index finger. Now you'll see that spike grip. And it's kind of spike grip that he used when he got to pro ball. It was okay, but then after a while it became a lot better. And he is a big proponent of the weighted ball program that we hear a lot of pitches. He thinks it really helped his curveball. Alan Craig, the first baseman, takes one upstairs. Yeah, everybody relates the weighted ball program to increased velocity on your fastball, but why would it help his curveball? Well, I think what's happening is, number one, it's strengthening, but it increases its arm speed. And so when he can really accelerate that arm with that spike grip, he gets a lot of bite, and it's late break, as you can see, with a lot of the swings from the hitters. Fair ball, past Dominguez down the left field line. Andy Burns in the left field quickly over to cut it off and get it back in. Andy Burns is an infielder but we have seen this a lot the last couple of years. The Blue Jays want to see how versatile their players are. Well I think players in general but especially Andy Burns. I think the John Gibbons and his staff really like what they've seen from Burns now trying to make him more of a utility type player. He does a very nice job here cutting this ball off quickly and getting it back into second base. It keeps the runner at first and the double play in order for Cecil. Brennan Bosch has struck out twice both those strikeouts coming against Marcus Stroman and now he's got to deal with a tough lefty and Brett Cecil. He's not had a lot of fun today Joe. <laughs> <laughs> you're going to make a two two and a half hour road trip you're going to face Marcus Stroman and then we're going to bring one of the best lefties in the game to get you your third at bat. Stays on that breaking ball and fouls it back. He knows he had a pretty good pitch to hit. Didn't make the most of it. You know what happens too as a hitter. Brennan Bosch got a good pitch to hit right there, but he was not in a good position to hit it. You can see it was almost a defensive swing, but that's what Cecil will do because he can also sneak that 92 mile an hour fastball past you as well. Comes right back and Bosch has had the hat trick. Three strikeouts on the afternoon. Cecil with his second of the inning. That pitch right there or the result of that pitch, Bosch getting caught looking. That's a result of the previous curveballs. He's seen a couple curveballs spin in. He had the very defensive swing, but now 92 looks about 102 to a hitter. Just froze him. But Cecil is a free agent at the end of the season. He's become one of the premier lefties out of the bullpen in baseball. There goes the runner. Got a good jump. Ball hit on the ground. Urania at shortstop makes an easy play of it. Alan Craig got a good jump. Brett Cecil with a good inning.
Saturday as Everton plays Chelsea in FA Cup action. That's tomorrow at 12.30 Eastern, 9.30 Pacific on Sportsnet World. Thank you, Hazel. Great soccer action here on Sportsnet. When you talk about animated players, we're talking about Bryce Harper and Bruce Gossage's comments about too many showboats in the game today. Well, you know what? Soccer's been massive for years. <laughs> This is Dominic Brown. This is facing Noe Ramirez. Ramirez works his second inning. Ramirez had a strikeout, walked a batter, but he was helped out by his catcher, Tali Solis, who threw out John Birdie, the pinch runner. That's an off speed pitch. The Red Sox have high hopes for their pitching staff. They're hopeful they turn things around. Last year, the Boston staff was 14th in the American League in ERA. They had dropped to a 431 earned run average, and John Farrell knows I don't care how much you hit. If you can't pitch, you can't win. You have to keep your team in the ball game and give them a chance. Dominic Brown chases that pitch off the plate. Strikeout for Ramirez, his second since entering the ball game. We were talking about that rotation last inning, and again, that the unpredictability from Clay Buckholz has really been a wild card for them. But Rick Porcello has to be better. Eduardo Rodriguez has had a bit of a knee injury this spring. It looks like he may not be ready for opening day, so that will probably be put off a little bit. Of course, Stephen Wright, we saw the knuckleballer today. He may be able to help out. Also, the youngster Henry Owens is one of those names that could fill in if needed, but they certainly need to be better. You see where they ranked a year ago in the pitching department. Near the bottom. They had some dramatic changes last year. Dave Dabrowski took over as the president of baseball operations on August 18th. Dabrowski moved into a position. First time the Red Sox have ever had a president of baseball operations. That's a drive down the left field line and fair. Up against the wall, Junior Lake is headed for a second with a one out double. Not a lot to cheer about here this afternoon in a scoreless ball game. It's been all pitching, but Junior Lake runs into this pitch very well, gets the bat head out, drills it into the left field corner. Blue Jays trying to get on the board and get the first lead of this ball game. It's the first extra base hit of the ball game. Just a ninth hit overall for Junior Lake, his second double of the spring, and that'll end his afternoon Roman Fields takes over as the pinch runner at second base and he can scoot. A junior leg vying for that extra outfield spot the only real right handed batter in that mix and that's a good thing for him to be able to show his manager he can handle a right handed pitcher as well. Matt Dominguez waves at that first pitch Dominguez had a single down the left field line his last time up he's one for two. The Red Sox back to back losing seasons for the first time since 92 through 94 when they had three straight sub 500 seasons. Well, daylight play put on there by the second baseman Marrero with his pitcher. Second baseman will slide over there and as he breaks you'll see him put out his hand and that's a message to the pitcher throw it right now and break it. the timing was a little bit late there and fields was certainly ready for it gets back easily. Bounce foul by Dominguez. Those are plays that you'll see teams try to practice in spring training. Do you see them much during the season? No, but that one time you do it. You might be able to pick a runner off that perhaps is trying to get that extra step and steal third base in a situation like this in a tie ball game. The seventh inning, you may get him by that step. The Red Sox were 35 and 41 in games against the American League East. For comparison's sake, the Blue Jays were 42 and 34. But 
Boston had the season advantage over the Blue Jays, 10 to 9. Chopper toward third. Chris Dominguez makes the play. Nice play by the third baseman as Fields advances to third on the ground up. Good base running by Ramon Fields right there is chopped slowly to third. He knew that he could sneak in behind Dominguez and get there to advance that 90 feet. Some base runners will just see the ball hit to the left side and put on the brakes. But that's a good read by the youngster. Take the extra 90 whenever you can get it. Talking with third base coach Louis Rivera. It's a Kiev. Carrera has gone the whole distance in right field. He is 0 for 2 so far. Boy, he gets jammed on an inside pitch. That might have hit him if he hadn't have fouled it off. See this pitch by Ramirez. Got way inside there, and it came back a little bit, but very defensive swing. That's one of those get off me ball swings as it's coming bearing inside. One hits sharply, but well fouled. Two down, bottom of the seventh inning. Red Sox won the World Series in 2013 and won 97 games tied to St. Louis Cardinals with those 97 wins for the best record in baseball. And then they have fallen on hard times last place the last two seasons. Dave Dombrowski wasted no time addressing those pitching issues we talked about too in terms of Kimbrell and Carson Smith. But also he landed the big prize in David Price. John Farrell's first season was a good one 2013. He spent 11 and 12 with the Blue Jays as their manager and then won the World Series with the Red Sox his first year. Boston trying to figure out just exactly what kind of team they are. David Price brought in 18 and 5 a year ago. Blue Jays know all about him. Craig Kimbrell's 27 years old. He'll be the closer. Full count two outs to Ezekiel Carrera. Ball four. So Carrera goes to first, runners at the corners now, two outs. Richard Urania will bat for the first time, the young shortstop. Number 78, Richard Urania. Urania is an interesting young player, Joe. It's exciting to watch. I've liked everything I've seen from this young man in spring training here. Plays a nice shortstop, good hands, good feet. He's got a very good arm as well. Swings the bat very well. We've seen him run the bases. Two outs. He's not timid about swinging the bat. Urania goes after that first pitch. He is 20 years old, just turned 20 years old. Hit 15 home runs in Lansing last season. Came up to Dunedin, finished the season with 30 games here in Dunedin, hit 250 in the Florida State League. Sharp play hit. Nice play at shortstop. Gets to his feet, and the inning is over. The Blue Jays threaten, but they can't break through. We played seven complete. It's scoreless here in Dunedin.
friendly reminder, Rogers NHL Game Center Live Game of the Week heads to the Lone Star State as Chicago takes on Dallas. It's the Blackhawks and the Stars tonight at 7.30 Eastern. Watch it on Rogers NHL Game Center Live. Roberto Osuna comes in the ball game, and we've seen Storm, Cecil, now Osuna. These three figure to be the finishing trio for the Blue Jays down the stretch in games. Big part of this bullpen, Roberto working in his third game of the spring, continuing to try to hone his three pitches. Give me your gut reaction to who opens the season as the closer. It's hard to take it away from a young man that's done such a great job, but I think when you bring in a veteran like Drew Storen, for me, he's my guy. Maybe a back off Roberto and he can pitch in that eighth inning a little bit. It's a nice problem to have for Pete Walker and John Gibbons because no matter where they go, I think they feel pretty good about that back end. Jackie Bradley Jr. facing Osuna. What's, Ball your, take on the strike? On, what's your take on that, Buck? I'm kind of of the mind, hey, he was the incumbent. He took you to the postseason. He pitched well in the postseason. Give him a chance to start as the closer. I think I'd have a tendency to go with Osuna. And if you do that, if there's any failure whatsoever, you've got Storm waiting in the wings. You pull back on Osuna and going the eighth, so it's not a problem whatsoever. Very good back end for John Gibbons. Fly ball to left field. Andy Burns has a beat on it. Jackie Bradley Jr. is retired. He's gone over three in this ball game. But Osuna, he is a pretty special young man. We saw him pitch in the most pressurized situations in the postseason, and he handled it flawlessly. He sure did. He threw a side just the other day here in the bullpen, and Edwin Encarnacion stood in because Edwin's due back sometime soon, just tracking some pitches. But when that session was done, Roberto called him over, and he was talking to Edwin. How many times have we said already today these pitchers love to talk to hitters? What are they looking for? What did you see? Am I showing you anything? Am I tipping any pitches? It was a long conversation. When I talked to Roberto after, he said exactly that, just trying to get better. And you hear that a lot from these young players. This camp is totally different than any I've seen in a long time here with the Blue Jays in the exchange of information that goes on on a regular basis. Hitters, pitchers, everybody kind of talking things up. There was a little hesitation from Osuna, and you betcha he picked that up from Drew Storm. These conversations are going around the whole clubhouse. Started with Stroman today, and we talked about that quick delivery he's talking about. Storen comes in, and you know they've talked. But there's Osuna. Again, he's so mature, again, for his young age, and that's what he's always trying to do. How can I be better? Do you see Osuna as a starter down the road? I do. The only issue I have is this is a young man that's already had Tommy John surgery. So how much can you get out of him? Maybe by keeping him down there, you feel a little bit more protected. That arm's going to hold up as opposed to putting him back in there and putting that wear and tear on his arm. What are the criteria you want to see from a young pitcher that suggests he might be able to handle that starter's role? He's got three great pitches, fastball, slider, changeup, and I think that's the biggest thing. That's why I'm still a big fan and in favor of Aaron Sanchez being in the rotation because he's got the two great pitches with the moving fastball and curveball. Changeup's coming along as well. There's not a whole lot of pitchers in this game, and they are starters that have them, but how many good ones do we see that have three quality pitches? Or in Marcus Stroman's case, four or five. It's just that you don't find them, and that's why that those are the guys that make an awful lot of money in this game. Says Devin Marrero, Osuna with a 2-2 count, one down. We're in the eighth inning. The pitchers have been dominant this afternoon. Only three walks in the game. Blue Jays haven't walked a batter. They have struck out seven. Base hit. One hop into right field. Carrera plays it back in. Devin Marrero has his first hit of the afternoon. One out single. Osuna told his manager and pitching coach that he is going to be working on things. He understands after a season in the big leagues 
that hitters are going to know him a little bit better now. So he realizes that he's going to have to throw that fastball slider and change up and be able to throw them at any count. And we talk about that being such an asset. Pete Walker has worked on that with Osuna, but he knows facing these veteran type hitters. May have to throw that slider behind in the count. Does not want hitters sitting on particular pitches. Alex Solis, the catcher, takes one down low. Pitch runner at first base is Henry Ramos. Takes over for Devin Marrero, finishes up one for three in the afternoon. Ground ball. Urania to second. Birdie bobbles it a bit. They still have time. And the veteran over at first, Casey Katzman, digs out the low throw to complete the double play. Osuna with another good inning. Gives up a single, but gets a nice double play. Urania to Birdie to Katzman. 6-4-3. Grass seed with water smart plus coating grows grass quicker and thicker guaranteed well marcus stroman was on point today as he prepares for a full and healthy 2016 season had that breaking ball going diving sharp down and into those left-handed batters and he backdoored this cutter to the left-handed batter right there marcus had all of his pitches going russell has been outstanding working with him we heard from marcus throughout the broadcast didn't quite get his five innings of work scheduled for four today but one went a little extra because he was so efficient yeah this was his third outing of the spring he went two innings three innings and now four and two thirds and he's going to jump right up to six innings in his fourth outing of the season this is roman mendez into pitch you see his numbers between texas and boston a year ago mendez made 15 appearances between texas and boston all in relief but he spent the majority of the season with Texas's AAA Round Rock Club. Andy Burns getting his first at bat of the afternoon. Dalton Pompey started in left field and went over three. Burns has made an impression this spring. Batting 385. He's got five hits in 13 at bats. These guys getting their second opportunities in spring training. A little more relaxed, a little more part of the ball club. A year ago, Burns didn't have too many opportunities. He was just one for four in limited spring training appearances. Had a nice season, bouncing between double A and triple A, hitting over 290. We talked about that utility role he's trying to provide now defensively. Well, I think people can look around and see guys like Brock Holt and Ben Zobrist in the fact that they're not cubbyholed into one position. If you're athletic, why not open up the opportunities?
three and zero. Oh. All right for ball four. So Mendez walks the first batter he is faced here in the bottom of the eighth inning. Lead off man aboard in a scoreless game. This is certainly not a typical Red Sox Blue Jays ball game. We mentioned the fact that they had averaged over 11 runs a game last season in their 19 meetings. Casey Kotschman, the veteran, his first at bat of the afternoon, batting in the two spot. Mendes has yet to throw a strike. Burns had doubled and Homer drove in four yesterday. And of course, they talk about those opportunities and what a difference a year makes, as you said. Now, the next year in big league camp, you're trying to feel a little bit more comfortable and you will get those opportunities. Talked about the injuries in this game. It's a great thing if you can play many positions. Huge asset for a manager to have on his club. There's a strike right on the corner. Casey Kotschman. 33 years old. He's got over eight years in big leagues. Started out with the Angels, made it to the big leagues in 2004. <laughs> Through the left side into left field for a base hit. Burn stops at second. Casey Kotschman with a base hit. Good inside swing by Kochman. By that, I mean keeping the hands inside the baseball, allowing it to travel, and he just shoots it through that hole. You see the shortstop Hernandez pitching that second base bag and double play depth in the middle of the infield. He's able to get that ball into left field. All eyes are focused on the third base coach, Louis Rivera. He's going through some signs, and this is certainly a bunning situation. AJ Menace is second in bat. He struck out in the sixth. Sam Travis at first base in on the grass. Same over a third. Chris Dominguez in front of the base at third. Looking for the bunt. No bunt here. That's a base hit into center field. Burns getting the way. Here's the throw from center. It is offline, but. Burns beats the tag of Solis as he gets back in ahead of the tag. The throw was up the first base line, and A.J. Jimenez drives in the first run of the ball game. He got that first pitch fastball in that bunt situation. And he was not bunting. John Gibbons allowing him to swing the bat. You don't see it a whole lot in these spring training games. Watch the jump by Andy Burns at second base. He was gone on the crack of the bat. That's why it's so important. This is a ball that a lot of base runners may have held up just in case the center fielder catches it in the air. That jump that Burns got at second base is the reason why he is safe at home plate. What a day for Andy Burns again today. Doing a lot of little things that impress the manager and the coaches. Good read off the bat leads to the first run of the ball game. Second and third, nobody out. The infield drawn in for Boston. John Birdie getting his first at bat. Birdie entered the game as a pinch runner for Justin Smoker. Was thrown out trying to steal in the sixth. One nothing Blue Jays. Breaking ball in there for a strike. Birdie is 26 years old. Comes out of Michigan. He was an 18th round pick by the Blue Jays in 2011. This is sixth season in the Blue Jays organization. He takes a mighty hat. You know, late in spring training games, you get into ball games where you see these minor league players, position players, and pitchers. So some people may think it does not mean anything. But as a manager, when you're watching young players, it doesn't matter who they're facing. Those reads and those plays in the game, 
doesn't matter what level you're playing at. What you're showing your manager is you understand the concepts of what's happening. That's what Andy Burns really did right there again with that great jump. Ground ball wide of third. Dominguez makes the play. Kotsman holds his ground with nobody out. Had there been one out, he might have broke for home. But with nobody out, he stays put at third. Most teams will do that with one out. They'll employ the contact play. Where right when that ball is hit, they will break for home and you put the pressure on the defense to make a play. With nobody out, not as willing to gamble because now you still have runners on second and third with just one away. Infield remains drawn in. This is Dominic Brown. He's DH'd all afternoon. Off the end of the bat, cued out of play. He is 0 for 2. He walked in his first plate appearance back in the second. Another example of situational hitting that these hitters do in the batting cage every single day. The Red Sox defense about medium depth. Brown looking for something out over the plate that he can get his arms extended and drive to the outfield to cash a run in here. Got to chase the ball inside. Oh, and she one out. Blue Jays have scored the first run of the game here in the bottom half of the eighth inning. With two strikes, that Red Sox infield will sneak in a little more shallow here, trying to cut down that runner at home. Ball in play. Kotsman holds it third. Dominic Brown grounds out two down now. So no contact play right there, but Casey Kochman doesn't run real well. But what you can do there is even if you have the contact play on and you run into it out at the plate, you still end up with runners on first and third and two outs. But the, the reason why you do that contact play is to put that pressure on. Maybe the defense makes a mistake. Maybe the infielder bobbles the ball or he doesn't throw a clean strike home. Now you still have runners on second and third. So it, it's a gamble. But at the same time, instead of second and third, you'd have first and third. Not a big difference. You may see the contact play, I think, during the season there. Roman Fields entered the game as a pinch runner in the seventh. Short hop glowed by Ali Solis, the catcher. Well, you talk about putting pressure on a defense. We saw it play itself out both in the ALDS, the division series. Texas couldn't play catch in the seventh <laughs> inning. And then in the World Series, Lucas Duda couldn't make a good throw to home, and the, boot, uh, the Royals, excuse me, won the World Series. This is popped up into center field. Uh, the Jays get a run on the board. They strand a pair. They've taken a one nothing lead. We'll go to the ninth at a pitcher's duel. Blue Jays get an RBI from their catcher, A.J. Jimenez.
the Blue Jays have a one nothing lead trying to rack up their ninth win of the spring. And it's been all about the pitching. A.J. Menace, the young catcher with an RBI single, has given the Blue Jays a one nothing lead. And now they'll turn it over to their rule five pitcher, Joe Biagini. And he is the guy that the Blue Jays are going to get a good look at this spring because if they don't keep him, they have to offer him back to the San Francisco Giants. And I think if they don't keep him, the San Francisco Giants will take him back. A good young arm. Had a nice season at double A last season with the Giants pitching in just his third game this season. This spring season, fastball, curveball, changeup guy. Talked to Joe yesterday, and one pitch he's really is trying to develop is a cutter. He has the same agent as Houston Astros pitcher Scott Feldman who we know throws a very good cutter. He was able to work out with him a little bit in the offseason and change that grip. He's got a four seam rip on that pitch but he offsets his hand just about to one or two o'clock and he just lets it go and he feels that he's getting a little cut. It's always nice to have that just cutting away from those right handers and into the lefties. He's got a heavy sinker. He's a big guy gets on top of the baseball. The genie is. 6'5 and weighs about 240 pounds. And well, he looks like he could last all season long working out in that bullpen, a guy that could really be an asset. The Blue Jays have pitched very well this afternoon. Marcus Stroman, the starter, went four and two thirds. He gave up just three hits, didn't walk a batter, and struck out four. Blake McFarland came into the game to close out the fifth inning. He retired the only batter he faced. Then Drew Storen had a good inning. No hits, no walks, and a strikeout. Brett Cecil, an inning, he allowed a hit, struck out two. Osuna pitched an inning, gave up a hit, nothing more. And now Joe Biagini trying to close it out. Misses with the first pitch upstairs. of those pitches registering 95 miles per hour on the stadium radar gun here and from what we've understood that it's an accurate radar gun that's a good arm from Biagini. The matter is Bryce Brents who came in the ball game defensively taking over for Mookie Betts who started. Ball and Biagini strikes out Betts. That's a good pitch, Joe, from his arm angle. It's a very good pitch. We talk about how big Joe is, and he again uses that leverage to work downhill. He gets on top of this curveball. It's 12 to 6, straight down. And again, when we talk about that 95 mile per hour fastball, and then you drop that with that much depth on the pitch, that's a lot to cover for a hitter. Great pitch. Matter is the shortstop Marco Hernandez. Yeah. Yeah. Genie evens the count of the ball on the strike. Like John Gibbons was trying to keep track on Biagini where he sets that ball in his glove. He got a new player into your organization. He's kind of looked for things, see if he tips his pitches, might show a little bit more ball in his glove on a breaking ball. Joe, it doesn't sound like much, but hitters can gain an advantage if they can pick something up. Oh, absolutely, and they sure do at the major league level especially. Talk to Pete Walker a lot about this last season, and that's something that they're focusing a lot on. A lot of big league pitchers will tip their pitches. They don't even know it with all the video out there, but he's making it a point now even in the minor leagues to have his pitching instructors be aware of that. You mentioned that last year, according to Walker, they had to clean up everybody's delivery. 
everybody was doing something that tipped off what they were throwing, including David Price. Absolutely. You wouldn't know it, but when you see a good pitcher like that struggle sometimes against a particular team, you have to investigate it. There could be a reason besides the fact that they're just catching him on bad days. Pete is all over that analysis. Cut on and missed as Biagini strikes out Hernandez. Two up, two strikeouts for Biagini. Biagini is showing a nice combination of a power arm along with that breaking ball. And you know, you pitch out of the bullpen, you don't need four pitches. If you have a power arm and a good curveball, you see a lot of good two pitch pitchers coming out of the pen. This will be an interesting decision for the Blue Jays as we proceed here towards the end of March. Biagini has been a starter throughout his professional career. That's why he's been able to develop that curveball. That's a very good point. As a starting pitcher, you're allowed more innings to work on those pitches. If you're a reliever in the minor leagues throwing an inning at a time, there's not a lot of time for development. Fly ball deep to center fields on the run. Looking up, this ball is gone. Sam Travis with one swing of the bat has tied it up here in the ninth. A two out solo home run to the hitter's eye in center. Well, this was a no doubter when you see the outfielder Ramon Fields turn around and Travis got into this fastball at 96 miles per hour, but sometimes too you fall behind good hitters look fastball and get it. He left that one a little elevated in the zone. Travis with just 16 home runs in two minor league seasons. Takes Biagini deep here. There's a bouncing ball to the shortstop. Urania takes his time. Biagini gives up a two out home run to center. The Red Sox have tied it. We'll go to the bottom of the ninth. It's a 1 1 game. Tomorrow on Sportsnet, a matinee matchup between original six rivals as newly acquired Eric Stahl and the Rangers take on Henrik Setterberg and the Red Wings. Puck drops at 2 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific time. New pitcher into the game for Boston. Now a tie ball game is Chandler Shepard. Shepard pitched in 35 games at between two levels of a ball in the Carolina League also the South Atlantic League last year for the Red Sox 13th round pick out of Kentucky back in 2014. David Adams will bat he is batting in the seventh spot in Blue Jays lineup. Adams having a good spring. He's four for nine with 
couple of doubles and a home run. Goes after the first pitch. One hops it off the second baseman's glove, but he stays with it in time to throw out Adams. One down. Walk off Ezequiel Carrera has gone the distance in right field. He's 0 for 2 with a walk. Takes a strike. <laughs> off speed pitch, tap foul. The Blue Jays have played a tie here in spring training. They played a tie with the Phillies early in the spring. Officially, they are 8 1 and 1 for the spring. The Blue Jays have plenty of pitching, obviously, in this home game, and the Red Sox have certainly brought enough pitching to continue this game should we reach extra innings. High breaking ball. Foul ball down there, and everybody's kind of reaching over, <laughs> and that youngster just barely hangs on. <laughs> and Kerr strikes out two down in the bottom of the ninth. Dad wasn't looking too athletic on that, but it looked like Junior got the baseball after all. <laughs> shortstop, number 78. Richard Urena. Two down now for the shortstop Richard Urena. Urena granted out. Back in the seventh. One one ball game. The Blue Jays have out hit the Red Sox seven to six. There's only been one extra base hit by each club. Blue Jays got a double off the bat of Junior Lake in the seventh and Sam Travis hit a solo home run with two outs in the top of the ninth. Everything else has been singles. Breaking ball cut on and fouled into the catcher's mitt. Three up, three down. We'll go to the tenth. Extra innings here in Dunedin, Florida.
Jays. Don't forget your 2016 Blue Jays season tickets are on sale now. Visit BlueJays.com slash season tickets to get yours. Lots of great, exciting games coming up at Rogers Center, so make sure you check out the schedule. Look at the season tickets available. Austin Red Sox will be in to open up the 2016 portion of the home schedule. Anthony Alford, the young outfielder, takes over defensively in right field for Ezekiel Carrera. Chad Dorado, the lefty, is on the mound now for the Blue Jays. Gerardo working in his third game of the spring. He's been uh, a little bit of an eye opener as well for John Gibbons in terms of a left hander through three levels last year. Had a very nice season, but especially tough on left handed hitters. If you're looking for a left handed specialist, could be in the mix at some point this season. Well, he really becomes important with Aaron Loop on the shelf right now. So every left hander in camp is getting a little extra look from the coaching staff. Loop is dealing with. Forearm Titans breaking ball lifted high in the air into center field. Roman Fields is there. Gerardo is 25 years old. He was a senior sign out of Mississippi State, drafted in the ninth round by the Blue Jays in 2013. Joe, it's an interesting story how he developed this sidearm delivery. Well, out of college, too, it's his senior year, and he wasn't having a whole lot of success. So his coach suggested that he maybe drop down a little bit and change that angle. The funnier part is, remember when I asked him, I said, why did you change it? He said, because I wasn't getting anybody out. He had to try something, and it's really something that he's kind of found himself. It's a, it's a real weapon. And we talked about those numbers against left-handed batters. Great success last year, and I think Pete Walker is paying close attention to that. He really pitched well in the Arizona Fall League, kind of the icing on the cake of a very good season. And the caliber of talent in the Fall League is a little bit better than the minor league. So he got to see basically all-star players during the fall in Arizona and fared very well. Fastball slider guy he said he'll mix in a changeup on occasion against right-handers, but... If we do see him face a lefty, we'll see a wipeout type slider, but very difficult for hitters to handle. Right handed hitters will tell you also that from a left handed pitcher, a little bit of a three quarter arm angle, it can be difficult to pick up the baseball as well because they're creating such an angle from the baseball almost coming from the second baseman and then bearing down in on you. Thing that was kind of a standout number for Gerardo. He didn't have many walks. Walked nine batters, struck out 58. Managers love that. Pulled through the left side. That's a base hit. Brian Lemaire with a base hit. Not a bad pitch by Gerardo here he stayed fairly down in the zone he got himself a ground ball but sometimes in this game they find holes and that's what that one did right there rolling into left field one out single now Sean Coyle a second baseman there's that late breaking slider in there for a strike Blue Jays and Red Sox will wrap up spring training with two games in Montreal, April 1st and April 2nd. Always a great trip for the Blue Jays and John Gibbons team. It's a big league atmosphere for sure. In Montreal, they do a great job of promoting the two games and the added draw of the Boston Red Sox. So many fans in Eastern Canada, big Red Sox fan, so it should be a raucous offense. Good for the players to be able to come out of spring training, and as you talked about playing in front of a lot of fans, 95,000 plus last couple of years over the two days, so 
They'll play in front of a couple of packed houses before they head back south to open up at Tropicana Field. There have been a couple of situations that have really caught your attention. Last year, of course, it was Russell Martin's homecoming as he played in front of the Montreal fans again, and his father was there, Russell Sr. There goes the runner, Menace with the throw into the baseline, and the ball pops loose. Not sure if John Birdie ever got a glove on it as Coyle strikes out. The throw to second got there the same time as the runner. Well, catcher's throw sometimes will sink into the runner on the second base side of the bag. You watch that second baseman, John Birdie, you want to try to get in front of that bag enough so that you can field the baseball so that the runner does not impede your path right there. Birdie got caught right there with the runner coming right into his glove. We had a pitching change as it looks like Ben Rowan comes out of the bullpen to take over, trying to close out the top half of the defense. Back in Dunedin, Florida, it's a 1-1 ball game. The Red Sox tied it up with a solo home run in the top half of the ninth inning. This is Ben Rowan coming in with two outs and a man at second base trying to end the inning. Ben Rowan is a submarine type pitcher. He's a sidearm pitcher in high school, but his senior year he went way down under. You'll see his knuckles almost scraping the dirt. A nice season last year between double A and triple A with the Orioles Cubs and ended up in Buffalo with the Blue Jays. Breaking ball on the outside corner to Henry Ramos. Then gets so far down. Watch how close his hand comes down to the ground. What he's trying to do is get good sink on his fastball. He'll see what he's trying to achieve is sink that goes straight down and trying to induce, induce ground balls. He'll have a fastball slider and change up from down there. A late swing and fouled into the seats. On to forty eight games a year ago between rookie league A ball and double A for Ramos. Brian Lemaire is at second base. He singled with one out, stole second base on the strikeout. One and two now. Burns, Fields, and Anthony Alford from left to right in the outfield defensively for the Blue Jays. There have been changes all over the diamond for both ball clubs. Oh, 
popped up and playable in the left field. Andy Burns finding the win gets there and ends the inning. Ben Rowan comes out of the pen to shut down the Red Sox in the top of the tent. Fans, your Blue Jays will be back on Sportsnet. Join us Sunday as the Jays host the Tampa Bay Rays. All the action gets underway for you at 1 p.m. Eastern, 10 a.m. Pacific time. Hey, well, that's going to be a good pitching matchup, too. Blue Jay fans will get a chance to see Aaron Sanchez. He's going to start that game on Sunday, and then he's going to be followed by Gavin Floyd. Floyd, of course, in his first camp with the Blue Jays, making a bid for the pitching staff. Arnold Leone will also pitch in that ball game, so you get to see Aaron Sanchez and Gavin Floyd and newcomer Arnold Leone all on Sunday. Tampa Bay will be at Dunedin to take on the Blue Jays Sunday afternoon. We'll be here for all the action. This is Andy Burns. Breaking ball. Chandler Shepard in his second inning of work. Andy Burns trying to make an impression on the coaching staffs. Had a good spring in a big day against the Yankees, including a home run. He's looking for something inside right now. <laughs> Thinking about extra bases to get the inning started. Three and one to Burns. Takes ball four. The appeal is denied down at first. Lead off walk. Well, Andy Burns continuing to do a lot of very good things. Good impression on his manager. Had a big day yesterday against the Yankees in Tampa. And we talked about the Blue Jays single run today. A result of his great jump at second base. Good read on that line drive base hit by A.J. Jimenez. Burns has got some speed. He's had a career high 21 stolen bases back in 2013. Good base runner, as Joe mentioned. Casey Kotsman, he can play hit and run. Ground ball. This could be two right under the glove of the second baseman. Burns will stop at second. Sean Coyle got ahead of himself. He was thinking about a double play. Got a little excited and came up on that ball and just tipped off his glove. All hands are safe. Well, it's about as routine as it gets. Ground ball to the second baseman. Easy 4-6-3 double play, but 
Looked like Coyle just got caught up right there. A little stationary. You'll see infielders sometimes get stuck if those feet are planted, and that's exactly what he did. If your feet get stuck, your hands become rather stationary as well. You want to kind of keep a rhythm, almost like a hitter does. Keep those feet moving, hands loose. Ball just off his glove. This is the way the Blue Jays scored their run in the eighth. Burns walked, Kotsman reached, and Jimenez drove Burns in, single to center. No sign of a bunt again. He was in a bunt situation. The Blue Jays may have decoyed the Red Sox because they really took a long time to go through their signs. And John Gibbons let the menace swing away, and he picked up an RBI single. Luis Rivera, the third base coach, will get signs from the manager, John Gibbons, in the bench in that first base Blue Jays dugout. High breaking ball. Birdie is on deck. Chandler Shepard has created some problems for himself here in the bottom of the tenth. His second inning of work. Menace may have requested time, but it was too late for the home plate umpire Mark Carlson, and Menace took a strike. It looked like there's a daylight play. They're trying to get set up a pickoff at second base. The second baseman put his hand out, but the pitcher, Shepard, didn't really notice, and he delivered the ball home anyway. Jimenez was taking all the way. There's ball four. Got to load the bases with nobody out. Two walks in an air. And now the infield's got to come in. Game on the line. Nobody out. Leadoff walks in this game tend to come back to haunt you. And right now, Chandler Shepard's thinking back to that leadoff walk. A very good plate appearance by Andy Burns, but an error follows, and now another walk to load him. John Birdie grounded out in the eighth. He can win it. Infield drawn in, outfield is shallow. Nobody out. Bouncing ball through, and the Blue Jays are going to win it. Andy Burns comes in to score. John Murdy goes out to the first pitch and picks up the RBI single, and the Blue Jays win it 2-1 to one in 10. Well, John Birdie was not going to waste any time, and you get into big situations like that. A lot of hitters will tell you, especially with a struggling pitcher on the mound, look for the fastball. The last thing this pitcher wants to do here is fall behind. Birdie jumps on that first pitch, didn't hit it real hard, but he bounced it up the middle for the big Blue Jays victory. Well, the walks didn't help, but certainly the air looms large as the Blue Jays take advantage of an air at second base. They win it in extra innings 2-1, to one, their ninth win of the spring. We'll be back on the air Sunday afternoon. It all starts at 1 Eastern Time, 10 a.m. Pacific Time on Sportsnet. You get a chance to see Aaron Sanchez make the start on Sunday. Gavin Floyd will follow Sanchez into the game. It's all about pitching this afternoon. The Blue Jays win a good outing for Marcus Stroman. It was four and two thirds. Great day in Florida. Thanks for watching. See you Sunday.